<sighs> that took longer than I expected. I had time for a wee nap. Light. This is incredible. It must have taken years to build all this. It's pretty nifty. And oh so shiny. You Azadi are really into metal, aren't you? So, what now? I need to access the engine's central control panel. There should be a speaking tube there I can use to reach Anna, Eno, and Fadaus. I'm guessing that would be in the center of this chamber. Oh, Clax. And there's someone there. It's just one person. Can you see if he's armed? I don't think so. He looks really old and frail. You could probably kill him with your pinky finger. Actually, he looks familiar. But I'm probably wrong. My eyes aren't what they used to be. We need to be careful, or he may raise the alarm. Stay here, bird. Crow. Crow. It's Crow. It's... <sighs> I should love to throw Roper over the edge. I think he's yelling at the people in the control room, or wherever they are, you know, Fredows and the rest. Because they're probably stalling Roper Clax. Various controls for the engine. These are all part of the engine, connected via pipes. Roundabout way to the center. These are all part of the engine, connected via pipes. Wizard, not really. Honest to gods, I'm I'm a, a an engineer, just an engineer. For some reason his oddly shaped head brings to mind Guillen. There's something familiar about him. But more importantly, what does he know about the engine? For some, I've seen you before. Your misshapen head, it's familiar to me. Were you ever on Guillen? No, I, uh, uh, uh... The truth now. Not in a hundred years have I been to Guillen. And that's the God's honest truth. That head... I could have sworn. What's your business here, old man? What's my... My dear chap? I designed and built this engine. This is all me. It's an accomplishment without equal in this world, and I... Uh, so, what does it do? What does it... Uh, uh, it... Uh, it calculates. It's a giant calculating machine, that's all. <laughs> mm -hmm. The pickled turnip beats the rod and nails every time. It's an impressive piece of work. Isn't it? A work of art. I got the idea for this after spending a, some amount of time inside a particularly insidious prison. Gods know what they're planning to use it for. I built the engine, but I'm not the one with the grand plans. You'll want to speak with the Prophet and his emissary. They're behind it all. I'm uh, merely a servant. As I said, just a humble engineer. I find that hard to believe. Believe what you... Oh, thank the cruel gods of all... Uh. 
As I said, just a mm. humble engineer. I find that hard to believe. Believe what you... Oh, thank the cruel gods of old you're here, finally. Please save me from this barbarian brute. Trying to get me to look behind. <laughs> Good job taking out the frail old guy. Hey, Clax! What does that mean? It means, hey, Clax! As in Roper Clax. Wizard, puppeteer, writer, entertainer, slightly creepy geezer. What's Clax doing here? Last time I saw him, he got arrested by the Azadi for doing a puppet show about magic. Don't ask. It appears he's working with the Azadi, not against them. But it doesn't matter. I need to contact Fadaz. And I'll be perching right over here, keeping an eye on things. Okay, so where's the communication tube? Is that it? It looks like a speaker. Entrance hall guard post. This is Baylor. Uh, do you need someone down there, Dom? Dom? Hello? Well, guess not. That didn't sound right. <laughs> it was not. Oh, okay. You should get it right next time. Thank you. That's very helpful feedback, Bird. You're welcome. Hello? Hello? Enu? Anna? Fadows? Anyone there? How does the Shadow Forge thing work? We're here, Kian. Thank Goddess. So, what now? Hello? You don't actually have to speak so loud, Kian. We can hear you perfectly well. I'll put Ferdos on. One moment. Apostle? I mean, uh, Mir? Kian? Uh... Right. Okay, so, remember our first conversation? You're inside the core now. The heart of the engine. And the chamber you're in, it's a, um, a battery. It contains all the dreams the tower has collected. Millions of them. You've probably seen the big glowing blue pillar. That's the vortex, the manifestation of the dream energy. You're standing by the main controls to the engine. I don't need details, Fadaus. Just tell me what to do. Sorry. So, there's a way to control the engine from where I am, but you need to give me direct access first. Right now, the engine will be in automatic mode, because it's, it's designed to be autonomous during the final calculations. You need to put it back into manual mode. There should be a panel to the left of the speaking tube. Locate the knob with a hand symbol on it. That indicates manual controls. That would be the middle one. Okay. And we're in manual mode. Good. That's great work. Um, um, we need to act fast because warning lamps will be lighting up all over. Now that we've disabled the automatic mode, you need to patch me directly into the engine's controls. Uh, do you see the, the panel on, on the, um, uh, I think the far wall behind you? Those are the pipes that connect to my location, to the, um, to the knobs on my console. You must switch that panel's redirector at the same time you switch the signal repeater on the main console. Switch what with what? At the same time? That that panel's on the other side of the chamber. This operation usually requires two people. For Dows, I'm on my own here. Oh, you're not. You, know that. you have Crow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, sure. It's still the only way to make this work, so, uh... I'll figure something out. Hold on. Bird, we have a problem. Naturally. And since you're including me, Crow, in this conversation, what is it you need me to do for you? Fadaus needs access to the engine in order to reprogram it. Fairy Dows? Reprogram? Those words sound like gobbledygook to me. Just listen. Fadaus, will Crow be able to switch on the redirector? Crow? What crow? Oh, it's that adorable bird who's friends with Zoe. Hey, Kian, are you with Crow? How did that happen? 
crow is a large and reasonably intelligent magical fowl capable of following basic directions. Can he turn the switch? Reasonably intelligent? <laughs> I, uh, I don't see why not. It's, it's just a switch. Reasonably? Good. So, Crow, that panel on the other side of the room, there's a switch. Fedaus, what does the switch look like? Reasonably? Really? It's big and it's painted green. It should be easy to find, even for a... a bird. Even for a... <laughs> oh, just wait till I get my beak on you, fella. All right, point me in the right direction and I'll flip your switch. Even a bird of reasonable intelligence should be able to pull that one off. These are all part of the engine, connected via pipes. Good. So, you'll need to go... there. See that panel? Look for a green switch. Wait for my signal. Then flip it. Gotcha. Wait, what kind of signal? Uh, a signal, I don't know. A, a wave. What if you have to wave for some other reason? It could get confusing. A fine arm waving. I'll keep my eyes open for flapping arms. Wait! Did you actually call me Crow before? Not Bird, but Crow? I have no memory of that. <laughs> you did. You love me. I'll do anything for you, Kian. Anything you want. I can't believe you called me Crow. Just do this, Bird. Crow. There it is again. Consider it done, Kian. Partner. Best friend. Crow's on his way to the other panel. What do I do on my end? So, let's see. There should be uh, three panels where you're standing. And further right, another set of three panels. See the big lever on the first panel? That's the one you need to pull. There's only one. You can't miss it. Probably. Pull the lever and hold it down while the talking bird flips the switch on the other panel. Don't let go until I tell you to. Understood. Goddess! Kian? Kian? What? what are you- Tana? Mother? Light! Why are you here, Kian? How did you... I'm relieved to see you. Where's... Where's Ami? Is he here? He, he's confronting Vamon's men. Together with the Resistance. Mother, we've seen the camps. We know what's been happening on Guyenne. I know. We... I know. We need to talk urgently. But not here. We must leave now, before... Wait. What are you doing here? I've... kept my eye on this engine, trying to learn what it can do. Kian, I need to tell you something important, and we don't have much... Okay, remind me again about that sign you're supposed to give me, Kian. Was it one arm above your head, or... Oh, hello. Wait, what? You two actually know each other? Crow... What? Does everyone know each other? How many people are there in the world? Five? <laughs> I guess I should be used to this by now. I've been around you guys long enough, nothing should surprise me. So, Mother, how's the Office of Scientific Research going? You just let me know when you need another message delivered. I'm your bird. The Office of Scientific... You... work for the Office of Scientific Research? Oh, Kian. Works? <laughs> Mother Utana runs the Office of Scientific Research. I know this because I've been a messenger bird for the Mother both in Sadir and here in Mercuria. She's the top dog, numero uno. No one above. She is the Office of Scientific Research. I was going to tell you, Kian. Just... Not like this. Not now. I guess it can't be helped. You knew about the camps. About the Magicals. About what... What Sister Alessandra was doing. How long? How long have you known? 
Wait. Are you behind all of this? I don't know what to say, except... I am truly... Truly sorry. Oh. Just... Just lie down. I'm sorry. Hold still. Don't die on me. You left me no choice. What... What did you do? Did you just stab him? Why? That's... What happened here? Who's that? An inconvenience. I took care of it. For your sake, I hope you're right. What's the matter with you? That goon. He... He sucker punched me. And now you're back on your feet, so get to... What's the bird doing here? You? Aren't you? No, 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 don't! Distractions. The dreams are restless. The engine is ready. It is time. But, but, Crow. Crow can't just die like that. Falling into the, the dream vortex will heal him or something. Right? Okay, so we've just escaped the dream or whatever, and now find that we're in Chimera with a strange suit and a shaved head and sensors on us. What do they do in this lab? Bioengineering, definitely, but what exactly? Sub-level 14, incubation, maintenance, sequencing, recreation, core, engineering. Observation is this way. Heavy duty. They could easily lock down this entire place. Now, given how technologically advanced this place is, how am I going to get anywhere? Jiva. That sounds familiar. Wait, Helena Chang's company. My mother. I don't remember Helena Chang. Why am I allowed in here? One nine. Faith. Faith. As in, my half-sister, Faith. One, five, Hope. One, three, Hannah. One, one, Zoe. Jesus, what, what does this mean? Was that my incubation pod? There's a message from... It's from Helena Chang. My mother. Something about... This is about me. Some sort of physical status report. They've been monitoring me in that room. For months. What's been happening here? It's a notepad. They're scanning molecular structures. People. Brains. They're scanning molecular structures, people, brains. So much data. We know there's a lot of data because there's so many blinking lights. Uh oh. 
probably should run. Where am I? Underground? And what are those blue lights? Proceeding towards sequencing, so let's not go towards sequencing. Oh. Let's go towards sequencing. Shit. I'm trapped. Well, we sh shouldn't have gone towards, sequ towards sequencing. I just want to stop for a second. This is not Briar Rose, shoot to kill. I did notice, I, although I didn't mention it, um, back when we were in the... Uh, Zoe was in that hospital room. I noticed that on the, like, a monitoring thing next to the medical bed, I saw the name Briar Rose. Like, that was my name, it said Briar Rose, like I was the patient. So, don't know why I'm called Briar Rose, but apparently they have orders to capture me and not shoot to kill, whereas with others they will shoot to kill. There may be witnesses. Take care. Authority, Wati Central. Wati Central. Wati Corp. Makers of the Dream Machine. to do this, but I need this more than you. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe I don't want to go in there. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's a bad idea. What the fuck? And these are workers, right? They're all... They're all dead. Jesus, this is horrible. They're all... I mean, they're all scientists. Why are they shooting, like, scientists? I don't think these are patients or test subjects or whatever. Move. Hold it. Central, I have eyes on Briar Rose. What do you want me to do with So I guess they won't shoot on sight necessarily, but they will shoot me. Oh. Dad? Zoe, don't Stop! Don't move on my ship! We got that. She's in the core. I repeat, target is in the core. Stay there. Everyone, stay exactly where you are. Hello, Zoe. Lady, I told you. Mum. Helena. Dad, what's going on? What is this place? You need to get out of here. Now. Everyone, stop talking! No idea what the hell's going on. The new age. Goddess, protect me. I pray I'm doing right by you. We cannot let outsiders dictate the future of our empire. The prophet is a tool, and so is this engine. Your light is eternal, Goddess. Under my watch, it will reach the darkest corners of the world, and beyond. Behold! The mechanical revolution! An end to magic! The dawn of enlightenment! Witness the engine and its awesome powers!
you know, perhaps this is kind of obvious, but I guess it didn't really quite, uh, quite kind of become clear until just now for me. I mean, obviously the engine is going to destroy magic, we knew that, but it just kind of all came together where I realized that what it's doing, kind of big picture, not sure about the specifics of how it's working, but obviously it's built on where the, uh, where the, the balance used to be kept and maintained, right? To the balance between the world of science and the world of magic. So, obviously what it's going to do is, I guess, well, break the balance. It's going to make it so there is no balance anymore. It's going to make it so that there is no, no magic. There's nothing but the world of science. It's going to make both worlds the world of science. Therefore, no balance. Therefore, probably bringing on the darkness that the Yaga mentioned. Because we need the balance, or else. Or else something bad. Keon! Keon, please respond! I don't think he can hear you, Anna. If he's hurt, we'll need a new plan. Shit. We can't even get out of here with those soldiers trying to break in. Uh, yeah. About that. Uh, is it just me, or is it, uh... Quiet? The soldiers must have left. Something's going on. Something bad if they've abandoned their posts. We need to move. Now, if we can't get through to Kian, or if he's... dead, we need to get into the tower ourselves. But how? If the Azadi really have abandoned their posts? Through the front door. That sounds incredibly dangerous. I'm sure it will be. Let's go. Wait! Okay, you two head for the tower. I'm going to find the others. If the Azadi are running scared, we have an opportunity to strike back. All right. Stay safe, Eni. You too. I hope Kian's okay. I'm sure he's okay. Kian's always okay, right? Hey, why? Why am I locked up in here? Let me out! I can't do that, but I promise I'll explain. Just try to relax. Please, I... Is that... Dad? Dad! Dad, what's happening? Let me out! He can't. Not yet. What did you do? I had to subdue him. There's so much at stake, I can't afford anyone getting overly emotional. New character unlocked. Let's take a look at that. Helena Chang is Zoe's biological mother. She abandoned custody to Gabriel Castillo when Zoe was still a toddler. In fact, Zoe only learned of a year ago. Before then, she'd believed that her father... Uh, what her father had told her, that her mother was long dead. Helena founded the bioengineering company Jiva a subsidiary of WadiCorp, together with her then-husband, Gabrielle Castillo. She collaborated with WadiCorp on their Dream Machine project, but disassociated herself from the corporation when it turned out Wadi had been using the Dream Machine for nefarious purposes. After Zoe exposed WadiCorp's plot, Helena drugged Zoe, for reasons unknown, and then she vanished. Her whereabouts were unknown. Until now. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't remember any of that, unfortunately, but it sounds like she was, at least it seems to be, a good person. You know, one of the good ones, after learning what had been happening with Wadi Corp and the Dream Machines. Gabrielle Castillo is Zoe's estranged single father. Gabrielle raised Zoe on his own, first in London, later in Casablanca, and they were close. 
Gabrielle was always there for her, and Zoe never really missed having a mother. One year ago, Zoe learned that Gabriel had lied about the death of her mother, Helena. The fallout from this momentous lie and from Gabriel's involvement in the conspiracy that Zoe was embroiled in created a rift between father and daughter that has yet to be repaired. Despite his continuing efforts at reconciliation, Zoe has neither seen nor spoken with her father since she moved to Europolis. Gabriel is currently working on a project in Mumbai, though he still owns an apartment in Casablanca. Even though Helen is my mother, she clearly has little empathy for me. Pleading may be pointless, but maybe she'll respond to anger. Open this up right now! Let me go! Let me out or I swear I'll... Calm down. Getting upset won't help you or your father. After we're done, you can leave. You and Gabrielle. That was the deal. Done with what? The culmination of 30 years of research. My life's work. Rebooting the world. What? What? I will explain, and hopefully you'll understand. But first, I do need you to calm down and be rational. Nothing good will come from panicking. She's right. There's no point fighting this. Not yet. All I can do is breathe. That's better. Deep breath, Zoe. Now listen to me. For the past year and a half, you've been in a coma inside Jiva's labs in Mumbai. You've been dreaming. No, that's not possible. Hold on, I'm not saying it's all been a dream. Everything you've experienced has been real. That's what's so amazing and exciting, Zoe. While you were dreaming, you projected a physical binary of yourself into the waking world. Think of it like entangled particles, one copy here in my lab and one in Europolis. You dreamed yourself a new life in Propast, and it came to be as real as anything. But why? Two reasons. Misdirection, to keep Wadi Corp off our backs, and more importantly, to trigger your memories and activate your latent powers. We needed you to return to that... that parallel other world to find and absorb a primal source of dreaming energy to fulfill your potential. Lux, are you there? You have a unique skill. You must have realized this by now. You can reshape reality. I'm a dreamer. There have always been stories of those born with the power to change the world, but I couldn't wait around for that to happen, so... Your father and I made you. How's Gabrielle involved? What did he do? They were married. Of course they made me. What does she mean? My father? We were partners. And you were the first experiment, our first creation. We designed you, the first manufactured dreamer. You were born in this lab. There were other experiments, half-sisters. Faith, of course, the final girl. She was a mistake. And you met Hannah not so long ago. She was the second experiment, after you. You were drawn to each other, and she was drawn here, to Angana, to the dreams. I know she's in Mumbai, but she's not strong enough to affect anything. She poses no threat. None of them worked out, not the way we intended. And I didn't think you would either. So I let your father take you away when you were a toddler. He cared so much about you. He was willing to give up everything, his life, his career. Me? How could I say no? It wasn't until you connected to a dream machine that I realized your powers were there only latent. That's why I put you in a coma and brought you back here. I did it to protect you. If I hadn't, Wadi would have taken you. Your father had no choice but to come along. He did what he had to do to keep you safe. We both did. We saved your life, Zoe. And we made a deal. Gabrielle would help me finish what we'd begun. We'd be partners again. And then afterwards, he could take you home. I'd leave you alone. The deal still stands once we finish changing the world. Okay, and why do you want to change the world? How do you want to change it? Please explain. Did she just say what I think she said? Changing what? 
changing everything for the better. I need you to understand this. We're going to remake the world, you and I. How? I don't have time to go into details, but there's a place we go when we dream. Story time. Different cultures have different names for it. The Aranda people of Australia call it dream time. Think of it as the initial state of all matter and energy in every possible universe. The blueprint. All realities originated in this initial state and they remain entangled, evolving one universe affecting another. Wave energies are fueled by dreams. Particles in our world are entangled with particles in Arcadia because they were created together in story time. Eingana has the power to change the wave field and thus the observable universe through dreams. How does Arcadia fit into the puzzle? If that wasn't a dream, then what is it? And Arcadia? One of many worlds spawned from dreams. A world of... <sighs> I, I'm a scientist. I don't understand magic. It's chaotic, complex, and unpredictable. Magic is dangerous, and it has no place in a rational universe. But we needed it. We had to bridge the divide in order to store these vast quantities of dream energy. We put things in motion to return you to Arcadia, but you did most of the work yourself. Of course, we had help on on the other side, a, a partner, but he didn't... You did it on your own, Zoe. You were compelled to connect with the primal force that inhabited the initial state before this universe. That was only possible by crossing the divide. Something called you there. Some force guided you. I, I don't know how to quantify it or explain it, but you succeeded. You absorbed the energy, and it didn't kill you. You got stronger. Strong enough to wake up and break out sooner than anticipated, but the timing ended up being perfect. You've reached your full potential. You're finally ready to interface with Eingana. Wati, the dream machine. They must somehow be connected to Helena and Jeeva. So what's Wati Corp's role in this? Wadi funded us, funded the development of the Dream Machine. We needed to collect and store dream energy. The Dream Machine facilitated that. They thought we were working for them, not the other way around. Wadi just wanted brainwashed consumers. They wanted to sell their silly toy to billions and rule over a virtual world. They have no imagination. What about my friends in Propast? What about Reza? Were they just dreams? If I dreamed myself into Europolis, what about Reza? My friends, were they... Dreams? No, you don't understand. They're real. All of it was real, Zoe. You were there, in Propast. A physical projection, walking amongst real people. A three-dimensional copy made flesh, using the power of dreams. And they never realized. Well, at least most of them didn't. I sent someone to protect you in case anything went wrong. It's a good thing I did, too. Things spun out of control. Falk Friedman saved your life. As for Reza, it's more complicated. He's been an unwitting agent of Wati. His reckless investigations caught their attention. They needed to manipulate the press and they wanted to keep an eye on you. He was an easy tool, so they brainwashed him. We'll fix Reza, I promise. She's mentioned Aingana several times now. Sounds important and familiar. Aingana. Meet Aingana. It took me decades to design and build her. She spans dimensions, taps into the dream energies. She's quite the thing. But she's actually not the first. Wadi had the prototype. They used her to operate the beta version of Dreamnet. After she was destroyed, we built Aingana too. She operates the version of DreamNet currently processing and recording the dreams of hundreds of millions of Dream Machine users. And now, we're reversing the process with you as the conduit, connecting quantum fields, connecting dream time with reality. Aingana will begin to alter our observable universe. 
Don't look so worried, Zoe. You won't need to do anything. She knows what to do. I've programmed her, and my template will guide her. Together, you'll make a better world. A world without sickness or death. A world without superstition, intolerance. A world where everyone's equal, where justice and compassion will prevail. A world not ruled by corporations or religions, but by science and logic, by rational thought. A better world. I need to stall for time, keep her talking until I can figure out a way to open this pod. She's waiting for me to respond. I think she needs me to understand. If I don't say anything... I mean, I'm not gonna go along with it. We already know it's, it, it's not going to work, destroying the balance cannot possibly work. And that's what this will do. I know this is a lot to take in, and I don't expect you to understand all of it right away. But in time, you will. Here we go. Is that you? I think so. I'm... I'm supposed to show you something. What? Why? What are you doing here? And where is here? I don't know. I don't even know how I got here. I'm... I'm a, a bit... Uh, a bit... I don't feel right. I'm not sure what happened. And I'm not sure I'm all here, if that makes sense. No. No. Yeah, no. I can see how that makes no sense. What are you supposed to show me? Oh, I almost forgot. So the ghost in the machine told me to do this thing. This one last thing. The ghost said that this has been my destiny all along. I don't expect you'll know what I'm talking about. Crow, I don't even know where this is. A minute ago, I was inside a pod in a lab, and now- We're inside the quantum weave that makes all the stories. This is reality's blueprint. How did I know that? What does quantum mean? What's a blueprint? Well, that explains everything. That was sarcasm. I detect sarcasm. This ghost in the machine, who was it? No idea. I remember nothing before meeting you here. Aside from a ghost telling me to show you what I'm about to show you. And I don't even know what that is. Show me what? There's nothing here. Let's go find it. Does this look at all familiar to you? It looks like a monastery. There you go. Maybe that's it. That doesn't really help. Hey, that looks like a diary. I f remember seeing this place in Dreamfall. Wasn't Brian Westhouse here? I remember playing some guy here. We're ready, traveler. Your journey is about to begin. It's a handwritten letter. I am at the crossroads between waking and dream. One path leads back to the world I left behind. The other path, the other path, leads to a place of shadows. Between the familiar and the unknown, between certainty and doubt, my choice would seem obvious. Any sane man would turn around, return to the world he knows, forget what he has learned, and live his life in blissful ignorance. But in truth, it is too late. My choice was made many years ago, when I first embarked on this journey. 
I cannot turn back. I am at a crossroads. But for me, there is only one path. I leave behind these words in the hope that someday they will serve as a map for someone else. To whomever reads this, Godspeed on your journey. If you ever decide to follow in my footsteps, look me up. Brian Westhouse. I knew it. Brian Westhouse? Oh, Westhouse. The plot thickens. Thickens or just getting more muddled. I don't know what this is supposed to tell us. That Westhouse is involved? There's that, I guess. Come on, there's more. All right, well, I think this is not necessarily a good place to end this episode, but I'm going to end it because I feel like we're really moving into a very big climax, but it seems like the climax is probably going to be many hours and there's really no comfortable place to end it, so I'll just stop here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to learn more about what Westhouse's involvement in this is.